Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great at CES right now, checking out literally what we're going to talk about right now, and that is out of oilprice.com. Saudis won't let oil stay at $75. And this is coming from the Pioneer CEO. Now, literally the theme of CES right now when it comes to vehicles is two things, autonomous and battery. And this is gonna be going along. We're gonna go ahead and flip this camera around real quick. What's going on? To say, literally, if you look at this John Deere rig, uh, behind it, there is an excavator, 100% battery powered. To see these autonomous, self-driving, battery powered uh, vehicles to transport people, literally, absolutely insane. When you cruise around here, you're seeing battery powered semi trucks. And this platform that you're seeing right here as I'm spinning it around is going to be a transportation unit for goods, bulk goods. You see battery powered cargo vans. The absolute theme, even down, hold on, even down if you see right there, battery powered soft drink vending machines that literally drive around. Now, if you don't think this is possible, let me explain this story here. Let's dive into the story. All right, Saudis will not let oil stay at $75. This comes from the Pioneer CEO. OPEC is likely to cut oil production again, Pioneer National Resources CEO said at a Goldman Sachs conference in Miami on Thursday. Saudis, or Saudi, sorry, Saudi is not going to let Brent stay around $75 a barrel, Scott Sheffield said, adding that it wouldn't surprise him if they had another cut. Well, that's interesting. Sheffield believes that oil futures will stay in backwardation going forward because there's no liquidity in the market. No one is hedging, Sheffield said. So there's nothing to bring up the forward prices. Now stick with me because I guarantee you're like, wait a minute, Ninja, it doesn't sound like you're going down the direction we thought you were going down. Stand by. As for where Pioneer's CEO sees oil headed, Sheffield sees the $80 a barrel mark as the base with an upside of $150. Now you think about it and you're going, well, wait a minute, hold on now. If we're seeing oil prices coming down because of a lack of demand or slowing demand, why would that happen? I'm gonna explain that in a second. Now that's all, this is my theory, but I gotta be honest with you. I think I'm gonna be right on this one. Back in the United States, Sheffield sees production from US shale's most prolific basin, the Permian, eventually hitting 7 million barrels per day. But after reaching this volume, it will plateau with only Chevron, Pioneer, and Conoco having the ability to produce upwards of a million barrels a day of oil equivalent in the Permian by 2030. This, however, will be achieved with flat or declining rig counts as services prices run at what Sheffield feels is an untenable high. Let me stop right there and add something. Saudi Arabia does not want to sell its oil or OPEC, any of the OPEC nations for that matter of fact, at the current price. They want to sell it at a higher price. So how do they get it there? Well, there's all kinds of ways. You can spin a narrative. You could push people into uh, a fear that they're going to be seeing higher price in the future and get them to bid up the price in the futures market. You could use, like I said, narratives from catastrophes, right? But the big thing is, is limiting the amount of oil that comes out of the ground. And Saudi Arabia and the OPEC nations know this far too well. And it seems like every time the oil price and consequently the gas and diesel prices push up really strong and then everybody starts screaming and yelling about it, then they back off a little bit. But the problem is then it makes a base and then it goes higher. You see over the last 20, 30, even 50 years, gasoline and diesel have been on a steady upward trajectory with the destroyed fiat currency. Actually, it's not even the US dollar. It's any currency that's um, being denominated, you know, the, the gasoline, whatever uh, currency is being denominated, over time, they're being destroyed. The purchasing power of your currency is being destroyed. The fact of the matter is a gallon of gasoline in downtown Los Angeles in 1999, at its low, was 99 cents a gallon. Literally, literally just a little bit over 20 years ago, less than a dollar in Los Angeles, California. And you go, what has happened to the currency, the purchasing power? Now, a price of a barrel of oil was also much less back then. But you look at the percentage basis and the rate of rise, it's not just the price of a barrel of oil that's going up that's causing these, these prices in oil to, to continue, or the gasoline and diesel keep going up. It's the destruction of the fiat currency. Now, 
you look at all of this technology out here and you gotta ask yourself, what is going to push people to buy these, these uh, pieces of equipment? I mean, just think about it. Buying a semi truck, a new semi truck like this one right behind me is one thing, but a whole thing all together, because everybody here, they talk about all the benefits. They go, oh, there's no filters to change out. The maintenance is almost nothing, yeah, almost nothing. You wanna know why? Well, batteries have a shelf life. And when you go to replace those, holy cow, well, what's the sales pitch there? The sales pitch is like, well, this is how much they are right now, the batteries. But in the future with technological advancements, they're gonna be much cheaper. Well, I'll tell you what, that same exact sales pitch was given to many people that bought a Tesla, brand new, years and years ago. And then when they went to go and replace the batteries, they're getting the shock of their life. I've heard crazy, crazy amounts. If you guys have had a Tesla or a Prius and you've had to change out the batteries, let me know what you think in the comments. As a matter of fact, I bought a uh, car a little while ago and it was a hybrid. And the reason why I bought this particular hybrid is because it was a Hyundai and it had lifetime replacement set up on the battery, but only for the original owner. Now the fact of the matter is, I keep my vehicles a long time. I baby them, I own them. But the company knows that very, very few people will ever do that. Now, do you want to talk about an advancement? What about a company that sells a truck like this, that massive battery pack that sits there and goes, hey, if you're the original owner, we'll warranty the batteries for life. Now, if that was the case, we would see companies, you know, trucking companies hand over fist jumping on this, right? But we don't see that because the truth is in this industry, the companies making these vehicles know that the companies that would buy them, would hold on to them, and would expect or demand that battery warranty. So the truth is, what is going to force companies into this technology? Because it's super expensive. It has a lot of limitations, like we've just seen with all of the Teslas and the other battery-powered vehicles that couldn't charge well in extreme cold conditions, right? Because under extreme cold, it's harder for these batteries to hold a charge. They lose it faster. It's going to be the price of oil. And I believe that you are going to see that $150 barrel of oil. Now, I don't believe it's gonna happen in 2023, but I would be shocked, honestly shocked, if we did not close out this year well above $100 to $110 a barrel. And if you think about it, we've had a little bit of a reprieve over the last, what, four or five months in the price of oil, the price of diesel, the price of gasoline. And it almost seems like the public is very confused. They go into this sleep, like they just go, Let's, we're good now. And they have no idea that around the corner is that next upswing. And I believe that next upswing in oil and uh, gasoline and diesel is gonna be right inside of the springtime, pushing into peak driving season. And that's gonna have a whole lot of narratives along with it. Guys, I hope you got something out of this. Crazy times, I wanna be honest with you, not a big fan of the battery technology. With that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.